Just because it's a kids' network doesn't mean you get to slip in quality. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 10 worst shows on Nickelodeon. Before we begin, we publish new content every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. For this list, we're looking at what's considered some of the worst live-action and animated programs to ever air on Nickelodeon or Nicktoons by TV fans, critics, or both. If you like any of these shows, more power to you. But for most people, these series were either boring, distasteful, or just plain not worth the green slime they were made of. Number 10, Planet Sheen. Sheen, do not push this button. Sheen Estevez has a pretty good life in the original Jimmy Neutron series. However, he leaves all that behind in this spinoff when he stupidly blasts himself off to a far off planet that basically worships him for some odd reason. Does it? No. Or does it? While the original series had clever humor and solid visuals, many believed that Planet Sheen's imagery was painful to the eyes, and the only joke is Sheen himself, showing why he really should have stayed a supporting character. The series ended before Sheen ever returned to Earth, not that he seemed to particularly care. Sure, he was working on the damaged rocket, but he honestly seemed perfectly content to have left his family and friends behind. Nope, doesn't ring a bell. Okay, now I got a lot to teach ya. Teach me? Number 9, But Ugly Martians. B K M B K M B K M. Uh -huh. Three Martians sent to conquer Earth fall in love with the planet and decide to fool their gullible emperor with fake reports while they have fun with three teens and preteens, occasionally going toe-to-toe -to -toe with a bumbling alien hunter voiced by the late Robert Stack. I ate those three Martians, so don't go looking for them. Hey, Muldoon, you the man! Though an interesting concept on paper, people thought the final product fell flat, thanks to tacky writing and stock characters. Worst of all was the animation and character design, which put the butt ugly in the series title. The humans looked arguably even worse than the aliens. The series ran for 26 episodes before ending on a cliffhanger, setting up for a second season that thankfully never happened. Number 8, Marvin Marvin. I'll take you places, make you treats, but first, a Clitonian back rub. YouTube celebrity Lucas Cruikshank got the chance to star in two Nickelodeon sitcoms, and they both bombed horribly. One of those hot messes features Cruikshank as Marvin, an alien disguised as a human teenager trying to adapt to life on Earth with the help of his adopted family. My force field is rather powerful, is it not, Dad Bob? If there's some deeper meaning about being yourself, viewers are bound to miss it, as Marvin's annoyingly wacky antics and hilarious gross-out jokes overshadows pretty much everything else, including the supporting cast. Yes, I'm looking for someone. First name Harry, last name Butts. <laughs> While it could be considered Lucas's swan song for when he finally left the orange carpet, that would imply that this feeble imitation of Mork and Mindy was some sort of high note, which is not the case for many. Guys! Ah, it's an alien! Why is everyone screaming? Because you turned off your human disguise. Sorry. Number 7, The Nick Cannon Show. Yo, what's up, students? Nick Cannon is here, and I'm taking over your school. What's up? After his role in Smash Hit All That, Nick Cannon landed his own short-lived spin-off series. This semi-scripted comedy has Nick taking over an everyday place or scenario to match his more outrageous vision. We even meet a few familiar faces along the way, including his all that character, Latanya. This is where they shoot the show, y'all. Maybe I could be on this show. While Nick himself has charisma, the show itself is pretty forgettable. Trying to act as both a comedy and a semi-reality series feels off-kilter and boring. Not to mention the premise of Nick changing things for his amusement every week was just too bizarre for viewers. The series finally ended due to low ratings. I've come up with a scientific method to determine how fast food really is. Dropping off the side of a building! <laughs> ha! Bullseye! Number 6, Breadwinners. Buckle up, duckies, cause we got a rocket bed! Delivering bread, flying crazy, cause we can! The creators of the original Breadwinners YouTube short were reportedly shocked when Nickelodeon greenlit this for television. And they're not the only ones. Is it not a beautiful day to deliver bread? Yep, yep. The series follows two anthropomorphic ducks who fly around in their rocket van, delivering bread to other odd individuals in a strange video game inspired world. While it aimed for a younger audience, there's no sustenance. The morals are half-baked, 
the voices are loud and obnoxious, the pacing is suffocating, and people felt constantly tortured with horrible rapping and heavy uses of toilet humor. Baby buns, big baby buns, shake those big baby buns. Sitting down to watch this travesty is no way to break bread. And trust us, this series' wordplay is even worse than ours. We got a sneak peek up in your beak. We got a sneak peek up in your beak. Number five, Awesomeness TV. Welcome to Awesomeness TV. I'm Ian. And I'm Anthony. And together we're known as <laughs> Smosh. Smosh. Adapted from the YouTube channel of the same name, this sketch comedy, which was first hosted by Victorious's Daniela Monet and later by miscellaneous teen celebrities, features skits, music videos, and all kinds of hidden camera shenanigans both new and reused from YouTube. Contrary to the title, few found anything awesome about this show. At all. The jokes are dry attempts to connect with a modern audience, but ultimately come off as dated and unfunny, despite what the overused laugh track might suggest. Top it off with lazy editing and sloppy cinematography, and you get a very harsh life lesson. Just because it's funny on YouTube doesn't always mean it's good for television. Do I have something on my face? <laughs> <laughs> nah, you're good. Okay. Number four, Rob Deerdick's Wild Grinders. Wild Grinders! This series follows Lil Rob, voiced by creator and real life skateboarder Rob Deerdick, and his gang in search of thrills and shenanigans as they take to the streets. Oh, and they have a talking dog. Because why not? I can't believe he fell for that! Wanna play a click? <laughs> It's been labeled a ripoff of the Nicktoon Rocket Power, and it's not hard to see why. It tries to appeal to the cool skateboarding crowd, and fails miserably. As if the tacky animation and the bland voice acting weren't enough, the characters are walking stereotypes in a boring, unfunny narrative. Man, we can't keep filming the same uninspired tricks in the same old spot. If it's as loosely based on Deerdick's actual life as it claims, then it doesn't do his life or its intended audience justice. Come on, man. Who cares about being golden grinders? Number three, Nick Studio 10. I don't know how I feel about this, <laughs> but I will go. Yeah, you right. shall pick a start red and green. Red. I will start with red. Technically, this wasn't really a full-length show, but it was universally loathed enough to earn a spot on this list. From February to June 2013, our weekdays were plagued with an afternoon block hosted by forgettable teenagers, which include behind-the-scenes activities with Nick stars and allegedly funny little sketches aimed for the preteen demographic. Oh my gosh. I love that plant, and this one was, oh. that was great. Oh, oh, give me that. However, the studio content had no real structure, making all the activities into a loud, unpleasant mess. And their attempts at skits it's a fart in a jar. left a poor taste in viewers' mouths. The following is an important announcement. Nick did it! Worst of all, they frequently interrupted any good Nick program with random clips, just because they could. Thankfully, the block was pulled that summer, and Nickelodeon watchers rejoiced. Cheers! Number two, Fanboy and Chum Chum. <laughs> Adding to the network's plentiful list of dynamic duos are Fanboy and Chum Chum, two fifth grade comic book geeks whose everyday antics include sipping frosty freezy freezes, pining over an Arctic themed superhero, or just being a nuisance to everyone around them. Robot? How would you like to switch brains? Totally bogus, dude. While the show does sneak in the occasional pop culture reference or movie spoof, those are tragically overshadowed by the unsightly, over-the-top visuals and annoyingly loud characters, and topped off with gross-out humor and dated jokes. What's even more shocking, it's rumored that Nickelodeon picked this show over Adventure Time, which ended up going to Cartoon Network. Well, we've all made mistakes. All right. I don't... Before we unveil our number one pick, here are a few dishonorable mentions. Pretty Panda is so cute that just looking at its picture can turn your eyeballs into birthday presents. Oh, yay! I got presents! I don't know your game, but it I have no game! You can say that again. Come on, let's go! Skinner, where's your concert ticket? Ah! Where's yours? Ah! Number one, Fred the Show. Good thing you're here. Tell me what you think. This shirt 
or this one. We apologize in advance for your bleeding ears. For unknown reasons, someone granted Lucas Cruikshank's YouTube character, Fred Figglehorn, three TV movies and a TV series. Based on the web series, the show is just as you'd expect. Fred engaging in wacky hijinks and screeching at the top of his high-pitched lungs. Now, Kevin, is that any way to talk to your B to the F to the F? Unsurprisingly, few could stand his aggravating attitude or blood-curdling voice. The show was pulled from the airwaves after a few months, and Fred the character was retired. Once again, we can appreciate Nickelodeon giving web content creators such a big opportunity, but it doesn't help if your audience goes deaf. I am really getting bored of this house! Do you agree with our picks? Check out these other great clips from WatchMojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.